The year was 1985, and Nintendo were finally ready to release their newest game. It was called Super Mario Bros, and it was about to change the course of video games, well, forever. But what did the box look like of this magnificent video game? Well, in the US, it looked like this, simple and classy. In Japan though, here's what it looked like. Instead of hiring a professional illustrator, Nintendo just asked the game's designer, Shigeru Miyamoto, to give it his best shot. His depiction of Mario looked fairly similar to his modern appearance, but Bowser and Peach both look pretty rough. Peach has the pose of a scarecrow for some reason, and Bowser looks like a bizarre BDSM warthog. And I think that perhaps seeing this art was what motivated Nintendo, because not long afterwards, they hired a professional illustrator. His name was Yoichi Kotobe, and his task was to redesign Mario. So a quick bit of background. Yoichi Kotobe is actually one of Japan's best illustrators and animators. When he was younger, he worked alongside Hayao Miyazaki, the Studio Ghibli wizard, who would later create this and this and this. Anyway, Nintendo needed someone to jazz up the look of their Mario games, so they decided to hire one of the best animators that money could buy. But Kotobe had some problems at first. He would draw these beautiful, smooth animations with hundreds of frames. They looked great, but they were useless for the games. Adding them in would just take too much storage space in the cartridge. But a few months later, Nintendo gave Yoichi Kotobe his first proper job. They wanted him to redesign the world of Mario. First was Princess Peach. Shigeru Miyamoto asked Kotobe to make her a little more stubborn looking. Those were his exact words. But could he please make her eyes a little more cat-like? Here's what Kotobe came up with, and Miyamoto liked it a lot. Then was Bowser, the villain. For him, Miyamoto pulled up an old film he loved called Alakazam the Great. There was this big bad ox in the movie, and that's what Miyamoto wanted Kotobe to base Bowser's new design on. It took a few iterations, but eventually Miyamoto was really pleased with this character's new look. It was great. Which left only one character to go, Mario himself. Now this was Miyamoto's baby, his child. And so he only had one piece of advice for Kotobe. Do what you want, but Mario doesn't kill. That was all he told Kotobe. And so Kotobe took a good long look at this most important of characters. For the most part, he actually really liked the design as it was. But there was one area that grabbed his attention, Mario's hat. You see, it had this red M on it. M for Mario, fine. But the way the M was drawn, it reminded him of something completely different. The McDonald's logo. Oh God, he couldn't leave that how it was. And so Kotobe started redesigning this M to make it more distinct, more clearly separate from the McDonald's arches. But that's when something very unexpected happened. It was McDonald's on the phone. They had somehow caught wind of Mario's redesign. How exactly? It was hard to know. Anyway, they had a request for Kotobe. Uh, you know that M on Mario's hat? Well, we've actually noticed it looks kind of like our logo, the McDonald's M. Yeah, yeah, that one. Well, we kind of like that it looks similar. We think it's an opportunity. And so we're actually requesting that you make Mario's M look more like the McDonald's arches. All right, thank you. So yes, you heard that right. According to Yoichi Kotobe, McDonald's actually requested that he redesign Mario's M to look more like the McDonald's arches. Now, as for what they were offering in return, Kotobe has never ever said. Maybe there's some kind of non-disclosure agreement in place, or maybe he's just a respectful guy who wants to give McDonald's their privacy. Either way, I can only assume that McDonald's were offering something in exchange for their proposal. 
some big lump sum of money, or maybe a marketing partnership between the two brands. It would be a rather forward request to make otherwise. Actually, it's a pretty forward request either way to redesign your company mascot to more closely resemble a fast food chain's logo. That's pretty out there. You can't say McDonald's didn't have guts, that's for sure. So all of this leaves just one question. What did Kotobe do? Did he turn down the offer? Did he ignore McDonald's? Or did he take them up on their request? Well, Kotobe actually kept his lips sealed on all of this. For the next two decades, he didn't tell a soul. But finally, in 2018, Kotobe felt ready to tell the whole story to a French newspaper called Le Monde. And when he was asked about his redesign of Mario, he had this to say. I kept the character's thick contour line. On the other hand, I accentuated the features on the M of Mario's cap to clearly distinguish it from the McDonald's logo, who asked us, on the other hand, if they could be more alike. So no, Kotobe and Nintendo ended up turning down McDonald's request. In fact, perhaps out of spite, Kotobe went out of his way to make this new M even more distinct than the old one. You can pretty clearly see the difference if you compare both versions of Mario side by side. However, this incident did not end up completely burning the McDonald's Mario bridge, because a few years later, the two companies partnered up to release these Mario figures inside the McDonald's Happy Meals. And this partnership has actually continued on up until this very day. But if you look closely at Mario's hat, that M is still very much red. Thanks to my amazing patrons for making this whole thing possible. If you want to help support the future of Thomas Game Docs, plus gain access to my exclusive Discord server, you can join at patreon.com slash thomasgamedocs. And I'll see you next time. Bye.